Our next speaker is Leonid Volkov. Uh, he's an extremely busy person for, I would say, primarily two reasons. One is the, he's chief of staff to imprisoned opposition leader in Russia, Alexei Navalny, who, as you know, in February was subjected to a fake trial uh, and sentenced to many more years in, in uh, behind bars. Um, so he's extremely busy dealing with that issue, and also because he's representing a person and a cause of defying Vladimir Putin, uh, well, he's very much in the news and interviewed all the time uh, these days, and so uh, we appreciate that you took the time to be with us today, uh, and that you'll be with us tomorrow in our main event uh, at the Geneva CCG. Um Leonid Volkov is chief of staff to Alexei Navalny, who, as you know, was poisoned uh, and almost died and nevertheless came back to Russia and then was thrown in prison. Uh, for that, uh, Leonid is campaign manager, was campaign manager for Mr. Navalny's mayoral campaign in Moscow in 2013, as well as for his bid to get onto the presidential ballot in 2018. Volkov created and led Team Navalny's network of regional offices in 45 of Russia's largest cities. Since 2019, Leonid Volkov operates from abroad, which is not surprising given that uh, the Russian regime is pursuing him with seven different uh, politically motivated criminal cases. An IT professional by background, Volkov is also the co-founder of the Internet Protection Society, Russia's leading digital rights NGO. Please, you have the floor. Yeah, yeah now, <clears throat> thank you so much, and my great pleasure and honor to talk here today. Uh, I didn't have notes because I wanted first to see the audience to, to decide what's important to address uh, in this audience. And I want to make a short remark. Uh, last year, uh, Alexei Navalny was uh, awarded by the Geneva Summit Courage Award. And it has been quite a breakthrough because Alexei Navalny, well, the founder of the Anti-Corruption Foundation, is an anti-corruption activist. And for many years, uh, fighting corruption, so doing something like investigative journalism and so on, and uh, fighting for human rights kind of belonged to two different planets. And the last year's Geneva Summit uh, Award uh, was very important because finally it has been recognized internationally that uh, fighting corruption is essentially also a human rights issue. Because, and that's something that we were able to demonstrate over the last 11 years of the Anti-Corruption Foundation works, there is a logic that a corrupt regime has no choice at some point but to start silencing the press. Because they can't afford to get investigated, they have no choice but to uh, <clears throat> remove independent courts because they can't afford to get challenged in courts. They have no choice but to rig the elections because they can't allow to be outvoted. At some point then, after going through all these human rights violations, they feel they have no choice but to start killing their political opponents because otherwise they're too vulnerable. And at some point of time, they, have, they feel they have no choice but to start a war. And this is unfortunately like a very logical conclusion of Vladimir Putin's 22 years long career in pursuing international corruption. There is a deep connection between the fact that Vladimir Putin is the owner of the largest palace in the world and largest yacht in the world, and the fact that now Russian troops on his order are doing unbelievable atrocities in Ukraine and killing civilians and torturing people and destroying Ukrainian cities. It's his pervert logic, very evil but very rational. He doesn't know any other way to, 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 to protect his stolen assets. He needs another small victorious war to improve his approval ratings, not to get challenged, not to get ousted, and so on and so on. So, we have been talking about this for many years. We have been crying, and unfortunately, probably not, not loud enough, not convincing enough, because, for instance, we have been calling for sanctions against Putin's oligarchs and his friends and his nominal holders of his assets for many years. And we are quite sure that if these sanctions would be applied preemptively, 
this could have prevented the war. Unfortunately, what the world has done was too little too late. But still, we believe this lesson has to be learned because unfortunately there are many other small Putins and wannabe Putins in the world that follow the same pattern of corruption, then uh, destroying human rights, and then uh, attacking their neighbors. Thank you. Thank you, Leonid.